Hello everybody, this is Ariel Snack here. Uh, I am hoping to bring you a uh, all-encompassing guide to deck building for all the various factions, uh, as well as how to generally use uh, the decks that I will be showing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I played Kalash Royale for a few years. Uh, I was in like the top 5% of players for like a year before I uh, eventually uh, got bored of the game and decided I was spending too much money on it. I think I spent like a total of maybe like 100 bucks on it. But um... So I have a lot of experience when it comes to games of these genre, um, the uh, you know unit summoning battlefield type. It plays very similarly to um, Clash Royale. So I made uh, five different decks, um, one of each faction except two with Republic because uh, they all build really the same in my opinion. Um, they are what I call mid range. You have tanks. DPS units, support units, and then like spells that can either be support or removal. And uh, you just build in a combination of those. Uh, first I'll go over the Republic mid-range deck. Um, I like to have in a mid-range deck generally six to eight tanks. I think that's a good amount because it allows you to normally start with a tank in your starting hand. And then you can normally draw one whenever you need one to start a new push if your first one fails. Um... And then I liked the DPS units to make up about half the deck at the very least. And then splitting the remaining between uh, spells and support units. Um, depending on the faction, you might have different amounts of good uh, support uh, units or spells at your disposal. Um, so here's what I use for Republic. Uh, as you'll note, there's no legendaries. I do have legendaries. I have, have all but uh, four or five of them. So, but I wanted to uh, make this a deck that anyone could use. Um, if you have legendaries, go ahead and add them. Um, a legendary is basically never bad in any deck. It doesn't really matter how you build. You can throw any legendary in any deck, really, and it'll be just fine. Because um, the legendary units are just that strong. Um, so here's the general, uh, general deck. I have two miners, three riot troopers, two pulse cannons, pulse tanks, two hot shots for... What are these? Cart cart catapods? There we go. Catapods. Uh, three strafings. One rocketeer, just because I needed another unit. And uh, I don't think they're as good as marines, um, but they're still decent. Um, they're better for single target DPS. But as you'll know, I have three snipers and two stealth blades. And then four marines and uh, four of the healing drones. Medibots. Um... The thing I like most about Republic are the Sniper and the Stealth Blades. Um, they are amazing removal cards. Uh, if we're going into uh, why I like them, they're very efficient. Uh, so a good way to win, essentially, is to build up a surplus of soul over your opponent. And that's you do that by making good trades. So if you have like 15 soul worth of units on the field and they have 5 worth of, units, of soul units on the field, and they don't have any, both of you have no soul, then you're obviously going to win because there's nothing they can do. You just have more value on the field than them. Uh, and the Sniper and the Stealth Blade are amazing for achieving that because they can play a six-cost unit, and you play a three-cost Stealth Blade, and it kills it, and now suddenly you have a three-soul advantage over your opponent because now you still have seven soul, and they only have four soul. So you have a lot more options than your opponent does, and that's how you win the game is building up um, a resource advantage over your opponent. Um, so these are all just overall good units. Um, the minor mech is, uh, obviously a great tank and I love how it takes a while to start because it allows you to build a larger push. Um, cause the time you spend waiting for it to, um, you know, start moving is time you're building up soul to allow you to have more units. Um, obviously you have to be careful when going against alien because they have the marionette, which will just cause all your units to immediately start attacking you. And if you waste all your soul creating this big push, now your big push is hitting you. You just lose. Riot trooper is great. Um, I love his taunt. It's very useful for, uh, you can start a push without a tank. And then as soon as units start hitting units, you can play him. Uh, it kind of just turns the tide real quick. Hotshot's a great single damage DPS. Uh, catapods are very long range, so I like them for AoE. Uh, strafing is just to go um, mainly to get rid of stuff like ballast, terminites, uh, marines, things to get played, and I want them to be gone immediately. Um, 
Yeah, and that's generally it. Sniper is amazing um, because it's single target removal from a range, so there's a good chance that not only will it get rid of the target and give you a surplus, but then it's still on the field, and now they still have to respond to it, uh, increasing the advantage you have over your opponent. So that's the Republic mid-range, uh, and Republic is kind of special from the others in the fact that there's actually kind of a different way to build it aside from the standard mid-range. Um, it's still technically mid-range, but it's a lot more support-oriented. Uh, still have So this time I have six tanks, and the difference between this one is I'm using um, Grenadier, and I'm using less Marines, and I'm not using any heal bots. Uh, the focus of this is around the energy beacon, which energy beacon, uh, you play it, and every two seconds it'll grant a random allied unit increased attack speed for four seconds. Um, this is amazing for any single unit cards. Uh, cards being like Grenadier, Hotshot, uh, Sniper, Stealth, these are all single, t uh, the, you play the card and it's just one unit being played. Um, Marines are basically the opposite, you play one card and it's five units, and each unit is very weak. So it doesn't synergize very well with the energy beacon. But especially cards like Grenadier, who I normally think Grenadier is very bad, uh, just because its attack speed is so slow, you don't really get any of the benefits of the AoE or the um, its special on hit that knocks uh, units back, which can be very disrupting. But it doesn't happen enough to where it gets to the point where the unit's already on Grenadier before he even gets an attack off, so I don't like Grenadier. But... With the increased attack speed, Grenadier becomes an extremely strong uh, DPS card. So that's uh, that's essentially the, the only difference. Um, and obviously I have Engineers. Engineers, what they do, you play them, and all structures, which includes Guardians, uh, will regain HP. So if you have an Energy Beacon down and it's about to run out, and it's, you always put them right next to your uh, Guardian to both protect them, and so that when you play the Engineer, it'll heal both your Guardian and the Energy Beacon, allowing the Energy Beacon to continue for longer. Um, and the Engineer is actually a pretty good off-tank. Uh, it's very beefy, has 2,000 HP, and it has, uh, it's not the best attack, but, uh, you know, if it gets buffed, it's not the, it's better than a Marine getting buffed from the Energy Beacon. Still have Strafe for removal of cards such as Marines, Ballasts, and whatnot, Terminites. Um, still have Hotshot, and then uh, basically all my single unit cards that are really good DPS, uh, Catapod, with an attack speed buff is actually kind of crazy. I was not expecting it to be as good as it is. Uh, I personally prefer this deck, especially because it synergizes a lot more with all of the um, legendaries, because all legendaries are single unit cards, aside from spells. Um, so granting any legendary increased attack speed is very strong. Uh, so you can throw any legendary in this deck and you'll be fine, uh, which I, you know, honestly you can say for any deck, but it's even more so on this deck. So that's what I like about this one. Alien med range is slightly different from the other mid ranges in the fact that I only have two tanks. Um, aliens don't really need tanks because they kind of just keep swarming. Um, obviously, there are the single unit cards like Xenoblade and Hotshot because they're just good uh, DPS. Uh, I really like Leecher Den out of. Uh, I don't like normally structures that spawn units or really structures in general. Uh, but Leecher Den uh, is nice because it just provides a lot of value. Each one that it spawns is worth 1.5 souls. And so, as you know, a uh, regular Terminite, it'll spawn two for three. And it will spawn... Um, what was the Terminite Queen? Uh, it will spawn uh, one every five seconds, and it lasts for 30. So that's six. So that's nine soul for five. So I like to, if I get one to start, I like to put it down, and I'll put down a Termite Queen or whatever behind all the Leechers. And Leechers are surprisingly good tanks because they restore HP, so even though they're not really that um, strong, you know, with 800, or that beefy with 800 HP, they're constantly regaining 75, so as long as they're not, they, as long as they don't take a lot of damage at once, they will continue for a really long time. Prime Leecher is a great tank for the same reason. Uh, it is both a regular tank, and it regains more HP as it attacks. Uh, Terminite Queen is overall just a, a great card. Um, you play it against a Swarm. I love when people play Terminite against my Terminite Queen because every time it hits a Terminite, you spawn more Terminites. So, um, yeah, that's basically really the only difference is that this one doesn't have a lot of tanks because it has a lot of life-stealing units, and it's uh, more focused on swarming the opponent with lots of small things rather than any big things. So um, the pushes work a lot differently for this, which I'll show in the uh, later on. Uh, then we have Beast. Um... Beast is kind of harder to play than the others, in my opinion, because you do not have as many options as others. Um, 
all of the factions have really great removal options except for beast your only options for really for removal are stench uh which is an aoe uh damage over time it also slows which is useful and then the war pigs which uh i think are not as good as the um uh exploding alien card i can't remember what they're called <laughs> but uh, i don't think they're as good as those um still useful uh and you still need them because you don't really have a lot of ways to deal with aoe in this deck aside from the tanks all of the tanks here aside from the rabbits um although i kind of consider them differently than tanks do aoe damage um i love salamander even a little bit more than faceless guardian um because the damage AoE around it is more consistent, so it deals with things like Terminites better. They will not have a chance to get attacks off. Unlike with Faceless Guardian, there's like a three-second window, I think. Yeah, three-second window where units can do damage to them um, before they get hit. Um, not really much to stay here. I kind of just have all the good cards, um, aside from Legendaries, obviously. Um, there's a lot of bad cards for Beast. Um, clerics are better than Medibots, in my opinion. Um, Poison Gecko is an amazing DPS unit, especially when paired with a tank, because it just reduces a, uh, damage. So if they play, like, I don't know, something like a Sniper, or uh, something that does a lot of damage to one unit, like a, um, a Goliath or something, uh, you play Poison Gecko, it starts hitting it, and it's just not doing nearly as much damage, allowing your tanks to survive for longer, and it's also good damage. Um, other than that, after that, basic DPS units, there's not really any support units aside from the Cleric in this, uh, in the beast faction at least not any that i would consider good i don't think there's anything there's some structures they're all bad um i would not use any of the structures in beast maybe the uh the igloom can be all right uh but i have not had success with it personally all right so moving on it is empire very similar to beast it's kind of just better though so we have again six tanks uh two faceless saints for uh what was it mumford the big uh, elephant. We have the two Dormorphs, which is very strong in my opinion. Obviously not as strong as something like Marionette, but it's a very good removal option. Uh, not the biggest fan of Mad Axes, the little uh, hyena dudes, but they are better DPS than what's available if you do not have any legendaries. Um, uh, the Red Witch is extremely strong. A 20% damage increase every time something is played is crazy, especially when it's AoE and it's already starting off with 270 just about. That is a crazy buff to be able to give it if you're able to keep it alive and keep hitting. It's ridiculous, and it attacks from outside the Guardian's range, so you can get it buffed, and if they don't have anything to deal with it and it's just sitting there alone hitting the enemy Guardian, they will lose HP very quickly. I really like uh, Snowy Owl. It's one of the best commons in my opinion. Um, it has really good single target damage. Uh, it is a really good like off tank. It's very beefy, and the stun is crazy because if it keeps hitting the same target, there will only be 1.5 second out of every six seconds that the enemy will be able to do anything. That is an insane amount of time to just disable a unit. Um, clerics, uh, again, the only support unit really to use uh, in this faction. Uh, Hammer scouts, I really like. Um, they're just a, an overall good unit for the cost. It's two costs for 150 HP and like 240 single target damage. Um, they're just a, a good unit. And then Ballister is decent, uh, similar to the Marines, a very decent uh, DPS unit. Um, so I played five different games, one with each match. I didn't have any issue winning with any of them, even just playing once. Um, so they work, even though they don't have any legendaries, so I'll go through them. We'll start off with the mid-range uh, Republic. Oh, good, you can see both hands. All right. Um, so here, I'm just waiting for soul to build up. Just generally what you do. I start with a sniper because I wasn't sure what they were going to do. Um, yeah, a... So I start with a sniper, and then I played a catapod to get rid of all the uh, big units. And then I played a riot shield as soon as they started hitting a riot trooper, as soon as they started hitting my sniper to save my sniper. And have a tank for the push. So now we're going on. We're pushing. That was pretty much the end of the game, I think. Uh, just continuing all this push, I play a hot shot so I can take out this Rocketeer so it doesn't hit my Sniper. And again, for just more damage. Uh, they used all of their soul trying to stop the push. 
So there's not really anything they can do. I think I'm just, I, oh yeah, I accidentally played a catapod when I was trying to play the, uh, the Marines and the, the, the Marine drop. I accidentally played the catapod instead, but it didn't matter because I had such a huge lead that it, it just won. So I'll go through that again. I kind of accidentally skipped over a good amount of it. But the, the majority of it was just, uh, I started a, a push um, with the sniper. And like I said, with the right trooper, you can start a push with DPS rather than um, a tank. Because you can play the tank later and it immediately draws aggro. I like starting with sniper because it's such a, uh, a long-ranged unit that uh, you can play it first and it doesn't really get into threat range. I played a catapod to deal with the marines, um, and then just waited for the soul to be able to play the riot trooper. Um, right now you can see he has four soul. Uh, right now he should be playing a sniper uh, to kill the riot trooper, but he does not. Uh, I'm not sure why he's waiting this long to deal with the problem, but that's really what lost him the game. I think he could have preserved at least for longer if he didn't try to uh, do this weird off-tank rocket tier uh, response. Um, I don't think he really would have recovered from that big of a soul deficit, but I, he definitely would have lasted a lot longer if he played a sniper right away to kill the riot trooper. All right, so that's that one. Now on to the uh, more fun version of Republic, in my opinion, the uh, energy beacon. All right. Uh, Skip forward a bit. All right, I probably start with the right trooper in the back, or a sniper. Yeah, I start with a sniper so that way I can play the energy beacon next. Uh, I kind of make a mistake here if I remember correctly. Um, there are lots of things I could have played. I think I, yeah, I I waited a little. I was a little too late on the right trooper. I could could have played the sniper a little bit back and it would have survived. It wouldn't have taken that last hit from the rocketeer. Uh, this made me very sad that my sniper died. So now it's just a riot trooper getting energy beacon buffed. I played a catapod to uh, deal with the rest of the enemies after my riot trooper dies, so that way I'm not taking any damage to my guardian. So it's long, it's longer range than uh, I think her name is Foodie, so it won't be taking damage from her while it's hitting her. And that's why I played it and played it there. Uh, oh yeah, play an engineer just to keep the energy beacon going. He plays a stealth blade. I don't remember. Oh no, I let it hit me. I think I tried to play the Marines, but I, I didn't get soul fast enough, and it still hits me. It's not really an issue, um, because I still have more energy than the opponent, um, and I just use that energy advantage to win. He finally has something to deal with my sniper, however, it's a a bit late. Play a hot shot, it'll be able to deal with these before they do any damage. I think I play Marines to kill the sniper. And my hot shot luckily ends up living as well. And I just keep playing. Oh no. Alright, here's what I yeah. I uh I let the hot shot hit it for a bit. I play the grenadier to deal with these uh slower moot units that it'll be able to hit before they get to it, and it'll be able to knock them back. And um, I don't think I end up using... No, I do. I use the Riot Shield here. I call it Riot Shield. I don't know why. It's Riot Trooper. And as you can see, this is a pretty... There's nothing he can do here because I have a Grenadier, a Sniper, and a Hot Shot. And then the Riot Trooper, who's just constantly taking aggro. With the man, uh, Soul Deficit that he has, there's just no way for him to recover. And then I win by playing a Stealth Blade that he can't respond to because he there's there's too many things for him to respond to he doesn't have enough soul to respond to at all so that's how that goes there actually wasn't too much of the energy beacon being used but when it was it got a lot of value uh next is the aliens sorry that this video is going to be a little long you can kind of skip through to you know but you want to see uh i just want to you know properly show all my decision making and how to use the decks I've shown because these decks are any anyone can use them because they don't use any legendaries. Um, he plays the Bernie Sisters, which is a legendary card. I just played the Prime Leecher, and then some uh, Leech bombs, whatever they're called, the Alien bombs, to make sure it died before it got its stun uh, ability 
off cooldown. Played a Catapod. I think it's a good uh, a good DPS unit to pair with the Prime Leecher because Prime Leecher cannot deal with AOE units. Uh, I play... Um, I don't remember what these guys are called. They're an AOE. They're a three-cost uh, AOE ranged unit, and their uh, ability is that whenever they hit something, they take increased damage for a period of time, which is amazing against tanks and the Guardian. They are very squishy, though, for, so obviously uh, I would only play them if you have something to protect them. I had the uh, Prime Leecher at the time. Here I wait for these to get closer, and I play um, just a Prime Leecher, to, or not a Prime Leecher, sorry, a uh, Terminite Queen uh, to get some free Terminites off of the units after they were already hitting my Guardian. Uh, played some Leechers at the front to tank for my Terminite Queen, and then I played Terminites as well to uh, cancel out the healing of the Prime Leecher. Uh, I play these for the AoE against the Terminites, as well as to deal more damage to the Guardian once we get there. And as you can see, we have the same amount of soul, but I have a ton of units on the field, so there's nothing he can do to stop this. And that's what I mean by uh, getting a, a resource advantage on your opponent is how you win. If you have more soul worth of stuff than they do, then you win, and you do that by making good trades. Next is Beast. All right. So I start off with the uh, the goats in the back because I didn't really have a good tank to start with. Uh, the rabbit's a great tank, um, but I don't like starting with it because it's so fast. It doesn't really get a chance to do its job. Terminite Queen is focused on it, uh, so I play the Wormlings uh, to hit the Prime Leecher um, while they weren't going to be hit by the Terminite Queen, so that way they you know wouldn't spawn Terminites. Uh, I played Clerics to try to keep the Wormlings alive so that they wouldn't die to Terminite Queen, because dying to Terminite Queen is worse than just dying to the spawn units for the enemy, right? Uh, again, we're dealing with the Bernie Sisters, uh, the legendary unit that stuns whenever it gets its active. I wait for them to get closer, use my War Pigs to clear out the Terminites and uh, weaken the Bernie Sisters, play a Snowy Owl to really just remove the Burning Sister from the game. It just removes the unit from the game, essentially, until you can kill it. Uh, I saw he wasn't going to respond, so I figured I would lead... Uh, I would continue a kind of mini push for the Gecko. I think it's a Gecko, some sort of lizard. Uh, I know there's nothing I can do to start the push when it's on his side, so I just wait for it to get to my side and build up soul before uh, using anything. I think I also use the War Pigs here. He has a lot of units grouped together, so that's a very good trade. I think he actually ends up killing one before it can explode. Um, so you yeah, just play Wormlings to clear them out. They get free. Every time the Wormlings attack, they incre get increased damage permanently. Uh, so if you play them when the units are distracted on the Guardian, attacking your Guardian, they just get free hits off to make them stronger. Play Mumford, the big old elephant dude, uh, to essentially tank while this is going. He turns all of my cards into um, the exploding aliens, which ends up... I mean, it, it probably was a better than just having my units hit his guardian, but he had to spend five soul on it, and it just kind of killed his guardian. Because uh, they were all at his... Uh, they're all just right there. So next is Empire. I started off with a terrible hand. Uh, still managed to win, though, because uh, even if you have all nothing but Ballast and Hammer Scouts, you can still make good trades. Um, start off with the Ballast, because that's really all I have in my hand. He plays an Igloo, which I was very thankful for. It lets me play my uh, Faceless Saint that I draw. I think I play Clerics next to heal the Faceless Saint. I was waiting for my uh, Dora Morph in case I needed to use it, but he only played units that were far apart. Um, so I opted to just go for the Clerics to let my Faceless Saint live longer to clear more units with his AoE. I play Hammer Scouts to stop this goat here, so that way it doesn't hit my Guardian, and then I have the Hammer Scouts going up to uh, support my Clerics and Ballasts. The Tortoise is a pretty good tank. I personally don't use it, but the Aura is great if you get two tanks or maybe even use the Tortoise and Hammer Scouts. It just makes things really hard to kill. 
So I wait for the push to get to my end before responding. I get 10 soul, so I don't want to waste any, so I play a Mumford in the back. And then I play the uh, the Mad Axes, the Hyenas, uh, because they're probably the best uh, single target damage that I have in my deck. Uh, play the Ballast for some more just damage, since Mumford doesn't be, seem to taking much damage from the Penguins. See, this is why I don't like using the Igloos, because it allows somebody to build a really big push. And aside from Stench, the Beasts just do not have a way to deal with big pushes. So that's why I don't use the Igloos. It just enables the enemy to use your biggest weakness. And yeah, so the push is just too big, so he uh, just uh, loses. So that's it for these decks. Um, like I said, if you have Legendaries, you can just add them. Um, I had, I used all of them once and I won each time, uh, and this is at a little over 4,000 trophies. Um, so you should have no problems, especially if you use, uh, legendaries. And also I have not used any of my Eden or Gaia dust up here. You can see I have like 22,000 of each. I have not used any of them. I only upgrade the cards that I use. Uh, as you can see all these cards that can be upgraded, but I don't use them enough to upgrade them. Uh, and I want to save them in case I need to turn them into dust uh, to upgrade cards later. But I only upgrade cards when I have enough copies of the card to upgrade them. I haven't used dust yet. So my cards are relatively weak compared to the people I'm playing against, and I'm not using any legendaries. I can still win just by making good decisions during the game. So hopefully, if you uh, follow what I've shown you here, you will also be able to climb at least to this rank, uh, even if you don't have any legendaries, which you're guaranteed at least four if you complete the puzzles and can get at least 2,000 of this um, uh, soul stones. If you get 2,000 soul stones, uh, then that's four legendaries for you if you complete the puzzles. Uh, so best of luck, everybody. If there's any specific uh, things you want to know, any specific kind of content you want to see, or any specific guides, let me know in the comments, and I'll try to get to them. Best of luck.